I bought the the Supreme package um, last last week, and I've just been having a hard time getting right into it. I I finished the the fundamental videos um last week, so today would I'll be considering day one of looking at the day by day. And I guess my question is that, like, how do you get into that mindset? So like, I took, I, I seen your videos, you said like not to take a cold diagnostic test, but I, I did. And like, I feel like very discouraged, like with the score, like it's, it's horrible, like, it's horrible. I feel like, so like just getting into that mindset, I would really appreciate any tips on that. Yeah, of course, Henry, sure thing. I mean, I'm glad you've worked with the fundamentals and you've discovered why I don't recommend taking a cold diagnostic because <laughs> yeah. for that very reason they can be discouraging. And so what I would simply tell you is my reasons why, again, that like, it doesn't reflect your potential, just an indication of where you stand at this moment. And the LSAT is like a foreign language. So of course, a diagnostic in a foreign language is going to show you that you don't have the, the foundation in that language. You don't know the grammar, the vocabulary, the structure, none of it, right? So you've completed the fundamental section of the course that gives you at least some basic familiarity, but it's simply an overview. The workshops section of the course is where we go deeper into the different question types, walkthroughs of each question of different question types, full length class recordings. And so once you work through that material, you'll have a much better understanding of how to actually approach the problems rather than simply knowing what the problems are. Yeah, I, I see like, like I didn't, like there was just a lot of language. So like I watched a video where it was like a, sort of a Jeopardy type, I have no idea, like any of those answers to those questions. And I was just watching them and it just felt like, uh, but I feel like I, I could probably like learn it in the future, like understand what they're saying. Like, so I was watching like the logic games intro and then the, the LR intro and things like that started to sort of make sense. So that's why I hope in, um, in a few months to get, get it down. So like the original plan was to take it in June, but as uh, this uh, way everything is, is it probably gonna take me? I hope a good month to fund, like to build a foundation in order to take it in in August. That sounds like the plan. Yeah, I mean, depends on what your goals are. So, let me ask you this: I mean, what's your goal score, and you know, how much are you looking to increase your score? That sort of thing could help us get a sense of how much time you might want to allow. Yeah, I, I, I'm aiming for the the 170s. Uh, I would I would like to get a a 170. See. By well, yeah, in, in August, I would I would hope to get it by then. I mean, it requires a lot of time to achieve your full yeah. potential, and so if you're looking for increases of 10, 20 points or more, then you don't want to try and knock this out in just a month or two. Yeah, most most definitely. That's why I allow like hopefully the five this five month period would be like the the study guide for the five month would be great. Um, how do you know? Like, since I mean, I can't judge it off the cold that the cold test like how do you know like where you need to like jump from is it after your first official practice test like on the study guide or i mean on the study on the on the when you have us take the the test i guess i think it's like four weeks down the six month plan so i guess what you're indicator so yeah so after you've covered the basics after you've gone through each section each question type and you've worked on them a bit in isolation then you could take a practice test and get a more realistic sense of, of where you're at after having gained some flu- level of fluency. So I'd say that might be a good, a good starting point after you've worked through the fundamental section, after you've worked through at least a handful of the workshop videos covering each type. Then you could take, a cold, then you could take what will no longer be a cold diagnostic, but rather simply your first practice test of what will be several practice tests. Okay. And then that'll tell you, okay, well, at least you've gotten a strong foundation, not just the fundamentals, which is like a basic overview, but a strong foundation having spent dozens of hours studying this stuff. Then you take that practice test and you say, okay, well, this is actually a use, useful measure now because it could tell me where I'm at and where I might be if I took an exam today that some people might actually do a real practice test, at that, a real full official exam at that point administered by LSAC, which I still wouldn't recommend because it takes five, six months to reach your fullest potential. But a practice test at that point will also be useful to help you ID weak areas that you can target in, in isolation. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. That's what, uh, 
yeah, like again, like that, that just waiting for, let's see where, when I officially take a full test, like with having all the knowledge of, of, of all the sections. Um, also, since August is, you know, it's, it's, that's also a little, a little bit hesitant to want to take it in August because they're going to go back to the four sections, um, like the original one. Is it, it doesn't impact any of the way that the study guide is set up, correct? No, it doesn't change anything. The only thing it changes is that you're going to want to include that extra fourth section, unscored, experimental, that you're not going to know the position of. You want to add that into the mix. So instead of doing three section practice tests, you want to do four section practice tests. And you want that to add that extra section, any of games, reasoning, reading comp, and any position it could be first, second, third, or fourth. You want to also include a break between sections two and three, and you want to give it your full effort because on test day, you're not going to know. So what you could do is you could take another exam. Let's say you want to take, maybe you take exam number 80, cut it into four parts and insert each of those four parts into tests 81, 82, 83, 84. And then later you could tally your results for what 80 might've been had you taken it separately. Okay. And then, yeah, then see what, what, what would be the difference between like, just like time, like just to push yourself, like to, to do more like in the time. Cause instead of the three sections, there'll be the four sections. Um, let's see. I have one more question. One second. Um, so another question would be, um, so, okay, I'm a full-time um, college student, you know, through currently through online classes. How many times a day would you would you say like would would you dedicate to studying? So like what feel, what feels reasonable to you? Reasonable three to five hours a day. That's that's, that's, that's I think seven days a week, so three three to five hours. How how does that sound? Try it out and see what it's like. I mean, there's a okay. big range there because three hours seven times seven days that's twenty one hours. Yeah. Versus seven times five, 35. Mm-hmm. You might also want to allow days off. And then yeah. a day with more classes or more assignments or more deadlines for school, you might want to do less on the LSAT side. And then when college is lighter, do more LSAT, but also use some time for just breaks and taking it easy, especially on a timeline where we're speaking now, early March, you got a good five months till test day. Mm-hmm. You don't want to burn out. So yeah. full-time LSAT plus full-time college is a lot. I think of it more as full-time college plus part-time LSAT. And then does, are you taking summer classes also? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not. That's what I was hoping to also like, should I? So from there, when I have more time dedicated, increase maybe the time, um, increase the time per day in the, in the summer once, once classes are done in May. That sounds like a good approach to it. Absolutely. Yeah. So don't stress it now. I mean, do something now, but yeah. summertime is when you can really kick it into high gear then. Okay. And then, so how do I take the most advantage of the, of the Supreme Pack, I guess? So it includes the, the master class coaching? Yeah. That, yeah. So definitely att- attend the live classes. I mean, you've, you have the all access to all the classes plus mm-hmm. the group coaching mastermind. So attend everything you can. You may not be able to attend as much now because you're in college. Oh, the mm-hmm. classes are at night. So it depends when your classes are, but attend the classes, watch the recordings. You can also yeah. submit questions in advance of class and they can help determine what we cover in class too. Even if I'm like not, because they say they are covering logic reasoning and then maybe I'm not up to that in the, in the week and the, I guess I'm gonna call it a syllabus, but yeah, but mm-hmm. into, in the, in the week by weeks, is it okay from, is it, should I still join? Should I still see what other students have to say, even if I have no, like, um, I guess foundation and, and, and approaching, like, let's say logical reasoning. Yeah. I would still definitely attend. I mean, okay. the classes give you the basics to help you learn enough to benefit. Okay. And you could always ask questions on things you're confused about too. Uh, yeah, that sounds that sounds really good. Yeah, like I was really, I was like, I don't know if I should join the class or join the class because I I wouldn't even know how to like what they're even like saying. But maybe if so, they go over like even like from the beginning from it. Like even if like, because I assume students would want to ask their questions and maybe not focus on like the things that they fundamentally know. But it, they do they do go over that correct? 
Yeah. So typically the beginning of a class will include some kind of general overview. I mean, for, I'd say for logical reasoning, it's probably the most useful just because there's different question types. So knowing how to approach the question type will matter a lot, but for logic games and reading comprehension, it's typically like a problem set, right? So rather than individual bite-sized questions. And so for that, it's much more about just starting from the beginning with that problem. So you could jump into those pretty easily, but I think you're right to note that logical reasoning is one area where you might want to know at least what a stimulus is, what a question set yeah. is before getting into the class. But you could always ask on that if you were confused too, and you'll get clarification on that pretty quickly from somebody. And then mm -hmm. you've already gone through the fundamental section. So I think honestly, you know, everything you need to know to dive into any class. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, um, like the word stimulus, I kind of like, I know what it is sort of, I haven't gotten to like a real question, like on my own, but like just from the, that video, like I, I'm like, okay, these are some familiar words to me. So trying to feel really good. I guess this is just, a, um, I guess, I mean, they just, they have like a guideline. I use a um, a multicolored pen. I don't know if um I don't think on the I don't know if on the LSAT they would allow this a um, multicolored pen. It, it usually helps with like I guess when they, when they were diagramming like at least in the the foundations video, it was helpful to make it different like colors. At least that's like how I take my notes. Is that something that I can use during the test, or you wouldn't like know the answer to that? I'm pretty sure it's allowed. Okay. But I'd rather you email LSAC to ask them directly just in case. Okay. They, make, they make changes all the time. I can't see them having a problem with it though. And mm -hmm. to a proctor, I don't even think a proctor would notice. But I would email just to check. Okay. And yeah. If, and worst comes to worst, I mean, you could just have a few different pens and yeah, yeah, make yeah. differences that way. Mm -hmm. It's because I like use this pen for everything. So, like you said, you always talked about how you want to incorporate like the test. Well, for the one, the test is actually. You will, you, when the test happens, you want to incorporate the, like the same exact, as much as possible, like a test day situation. So environment. So that's why if I use the same pen, if I use, you know, the same environment, so that's, that's what uh, I'm trying to like get from, at least from the videos I see on your Instagram. And on yeah. Yeah, exactly. TikTok. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. You're right. That's the mindset behind that question. That would apply to anything really. So yeah, let's say hypothetically you email LSAC and they say no at least you've now got five months to find a different way of doing things and get used to that way. And alternatively, if they say, yes, it's fine. Fantastic. Then keep doing it. Yeah. No, definitely. And then also like save their response in case, like, let's say the test aid proctor gives you trouble about something you've got, you could say, Hey, like, do you mind if I show you LSAC's email to me? Because they said it was fine. And I don't think they'll have an issue with pens. I'm just speaking more generally in case there was something else like that, that comes up over the next several months. And then, so I know, you know, obviously the three greatest sections are like the most important, but is the essay by any chance, like, is that something that you review? Or is it like lightly, like the essay at the end of the exam? I think the... Yes, yeah, so the writing sample. Yes, yeah, so the, the, writing, sample, the yeah. writing sample, yes. So the LSAT writing sample is, you're right, it's not as important as the scored sections, but law schools can look at it and they sometimes do. I have a couple of workshops in the course on the writing sample specifically. So check them out later. I wouldn't worry for now though. Focus on the scored stuff that matters the most. And yeah, yeah, most definitely. When yeah. you're done, I mean, let's say you, you take the LSAT in mid-August. After you're done with it, take a day or two to take it easy because you deserve it. And then you do, you could watch the writing sample workshops and then knock that out too. It's really not yeah. that big a deal though. Mm -hmm. And then you also have uh, the personal statement workshops and application, which is down the line, but like, I hope to apply for, so I guess next cycle, that would be 20, so for fall 2022, 2022, um, you have those um, online on your website and also, yeah. correct? Yeah, so we've got, we've got a whole section of the course just on admissions, and we've got admission sessions every week as well on Wednesday nights. We've got things covering admissions. We have application essay workshops. We have walkthroughs. Uh, this week, we have something on the diversity statement. We've got a lot of questions on that. How is it different from the personal statement and who should write one, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. The answer, by the way, is that everybody should write one and find a way to talk about their what diversity they bring. So I definitely suggest attending that and anything else. But of course, if the else that's your focus, that's fine. I mean, you can catch the recordings on admissions later. All right.
Um, yeah, I think that that's all. Is there any questions for me moving forward? I would say just I would just ask you come to the classes. That's my that's my that's my question. For you. Yeah. Please go. Ahead. Yeah. Is to is to come to the class. Can you come to the classes? Come to the classes. Make full use of them as you're able. I get that you're busy with college too, though. So I wouldn't expect you to attend every single one. But mm-hmm. attend and don't don't be shy to attend if you haven't covered something as much as you might have liked to yet, because okay. the class is the way for you to cover it more. Yeah, most definitely. I'll I'll, I'll try to attend one, one. I'll try to attend once a week. I'll, I'll try as many as possible. Oh, as it is. Those are a good rule of thumb. So yeah, as, as many as possible. At least at least once a week, just to keep you engaged and keep this okay. as something that's an active part of your life. And then don't stress anything because you can always catch the recordings of everything you miss. All right, thank you very much. If yeah, always, Henry, I'm glad we connected. Keep in touch, and I'll see you in class soon. All right, thank you. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.